You're joking, aren't you? It's the Teesside Chef. Okay, salt of the earth northerners, your tea's ready, and I did make scraps for you lot as well, of course. And look away now, soft shandy drinking southerners, because I'm flattening all of this in a stotty bread cake. And if you hadn't already guessed, I'm making mushy pea fritters today. Homemade mushy peas are best for this, and I'll show you how to make your own in the link in the top right of your screen. You need to cook your mushy peas really well until they are a very thick consistency before chilling completely in the fridge where they will subsequently achieve the appetising looking solid texture you are witnessing here. And if you're not British and you're a bit confused by the themes explored in this video, what I'm doing really with this recipe is satirising the implied cultural, culinary and socio-economic differences between the North and the South on this ailing island. The tired trope that Northerners all wear flat caps and eat rats, while the bourgeois Southern glitterati walk around with their noses in the air, pissing cash out of their bottoms, is only partly true these days. I prepared a baking tray lined with baking paper, and now it's just a case of rolling a sort of heaped tablespoons worth of the chilled mushy peas into balls, and once you've filled your tray, you're going to want to pop them in the freezer, until they're as hard as nails, just like me, and while all that's happening, we can prepare the batter within which we will envelop all of this tomfoolery. Solid, down-to-earth, friendly batter for solid, down-to-earth, friendly northern people, with one teaspoon of baking powder per 100 grams of all-purpose flour, self-raising flour essentially, and this also does work for those arrogant southerners. Uh, I'm only joking, southerners. We're all people, aren't we, you know? I've met plenty of southerners who are sound as a pound, and... Plenty of northerners who are absolute tits. But uh, anyway, we're going to get some cold, fizzy water going in now. Double by weight to that of the flour you're using is a good yardstick. For 16 of these fritters, I've used 200 grams of flour, but you may have to adjust that, depending on what you're battering. And after a good whisk, this batter mixture should have the texture of cream, and you want to let that sit now for about 30 minutes. And in that time, it will thicken up a itty bitty bit more, after which time we can get our frozen pea balls back in. Give them a little tap on the shoulder to make sure they're solid enough. And the next stage is very simple. We're going to need more flour and our bowl of batter in a pretty little chorus line. And I already have a pan of oil preheating to 170 degrees Celsius, and that's around 340 Fahrenheit or so. I have rolled a frozen pea ball really well in the flour. And after that, I'm just going to simply plop it into the bowl of batter, making sure to keep my left hook for rolling in the flour and my right hook for rolling in the batter. And now I can carefully fire it all straight into my oil. And you will need to cook these for around 8 to 10 minutes. Don't crowd your pan too much. And pay particular attention here, Southerners, because you'll have to make these at home yourself. You can't buy these in Waitrose. Those Northerners don't really have Waitrose. Probably wouldn't even let us in. We're not posh enough. Don't even want to go in. And you know, despite my polarising rhetoric, these mushy pea fritters are for everybody, really. Northerners, Southerners, and despite our hugely successful Brexit, even foreign types. And I know that there are lots of people from other countries that watch my channel. Some of my viewers are even American. So here for you all is a perfect example of post-industrial Northern English fare including the always essential chip shop scraps. And let's have a look at the finished article, crispy and golden on the outside and filled with Yorkshire caviar. And you could eat these with anything, really. But as I'm feeling a little extra sophisticated today, I'm going to cram these into a jaudy, stotty bread cake. Link in the description. And we can debate all day, if you like, about whether I really should be buttering this or not. But I think there's definitely one thing we can all agree on, and that's the inclusion of chip shop curry sauce. Link in the description. And you have to be extremely generous with this, obviously. Top with the scraps and plenty of salt and vinegar. And I did ponder whether I should have put ketchup on while I was squishing all this down. And that's another debate for the ages, so let me know what you think about that in the comments below. And no matter what side of any particular divide you're on, I think we can all concur that this is the greatest recipe on YouTube. See you next time, everyone. Terra.